guys, welcome back. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a new series. I am going to go through the questions you guys asked me. Remember I asked you guys about a QA. and a I'll do a few videos and I'll go through and answer some of these questions if I didn't already answer them. I wanna answer all the questions that you guys have. So here's one. Question number one. What made you wanna start YouTube and how did you build your platform? I started on TikTok. TikTok is who made me who I am. That's how I learned how to make videos. That's how I chose a niche. That's just everything I learned and everything I did is from TikTok. How I started, I just saw people talking about addiction and recovery. So I put a couple of videos out there in the mix of my other videos. My first videos were just everywhere. Of course, the quality was bad. It was just, I was a mess, but I was just having fun, you know? And my addiction recovery videos, some of those, they didn't go viral, but they got more views than my other videos. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's people that want to hear about my story. So what I did at first, I was sharing my story. So I'm like, how can I reach people and help people? I was thinking, okay, if I was in active addiction, what would catch my attention? because I wanted to reach more than just the people in recovery. So I just started really going into detail with skits, sharing my stories, but making it more general because I know I'm not the only one that went through that crazy stuff, you know? And then I also know that there are people that are going through it right now that can relate to it. And you know, once they see, oh wow, somebody else is going through that. Cause when I was out there, I didn't think anybody was going through that. I thought I was the only one. But to see someone else talking about my life and what I'm going through, and even for those in recovery, seeing someone talking about what I went through or, you know, my recovery videos, just seeing someone else that knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I talked about the things that we can't just go and talk to, you know, our family or our, our loved ones or who we're dating, our spouses, our boyfriends, girlfriends. They won't understand unless they've been through it. So I'm like, okay, let me just talk about all the stuff. Let me put my life on blast. I'll take all the heat, it's fine. So it'll help others, so it'll reach the right people. And it worked, it worked. I just started being real and started telling the crazy stories and people related to it. And then, I don't know, I, you know, jail is part of my story. Jail isn't my main focus on my page, but it's part of my story. And it's like a whole nother story on top of addiction and recovery, but it all relates. And most of us have been through the craziness, you know? So yeah, I just started slowly adding in stuff, adding in stuff. And then people started asking me about who I was. Who are you? Like, what do you do? Da, 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 da. So I started sharing more of my personal life. I just started sharing like, you know, my job and my routines and this and this and that. And that's just what I've been doing. Something from jail because there's so many people that like the jail videos and it's not for views, you guys. It's to help educate. And there's people that have loved ones in jail and they, they're worried sick about them. They don't know what's going on and they're getting some kind of clarification, some kind of answers. Same thing with the addiction recovery videos. They have family members, loved ones that are going through or have been through this and they want to understand these things. And you know, us as addicts, recovering addicts, we're not too open about talking about this stuff, especially with our family. So our loved ones are like, how can we find out? We want to know them more. We want to know what you've been through, you know? I'm kind of bringing it all to light so people can see. And that way, nobody else's life is being put on blast. I don't mind because you know what? It got me to where I'm at today. I'm, I am proud of where I'm at today. I'm proud of myself for hanging in there, staying strong, you know, and I'm proud of you guys too. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I slowly built my platform. How I got to YouTube, my TikTok community, they were like, please, please make a YouTube. A lot of them were asking for the vlogs because I wasn't doing that many vlogs at first on my TikTok. I was just mixing it up and they were asking for longer vlogs. So that's why I got on YouTube. First, I was just reposting my shorts here and there. And then it's so crazy because it was like six months after I posted them that they just all went viral at the same time. It was crazy. And in the meantime, I was posting long videos here and there because I don't, I'm still learning YouTube. I say that because I don't watch YouTube on a regular basis. The long form videos, 
And to be honest with you, I've just been winging it. I have just been getting on here and recording, you know, just holding the phone up and this is what we're doing. And, you know, I'm slowly learning. I'm slowly learning. Long form and short form are completely different things. <laughs> and then to know what to talk about in long form, because in my mind, I'm like, these people aren't going to want to hear me talk for 30 minutes. I mean, what? <laughs> but that's how I got onto YouTube. And this is where I'm at now. I'm trying to get in the rhythm of long form videos. I did the vlogs and you guys know me, I switch it up. Life is not just one thing. It's every part of it, every scenario, every perspective. You know, my life now, I wanna touch bases on this. When I show my life now, I'm showing you guys recovery is possible. This is how I get through the days. I have routines. I try to go out and just do something. Go, if I go to the store, I don't have to buy something, but I'm getting out of the house. I'm just enjoying, just enjoying life the best way that I can at the moment right now. Go to the next question. If my family would do a Q&A video with me, we did the one with my sister. My mom, she will, but when she's ready, when she's ready, she will. What did you order from commissary? Okay, commissary is, it's like a store in jail, but it's not somewhere you go. You just get on a little kiosk and it has like a list of things. And if you have money, you purchase it. I would just get like, for me, mostly it was coffee. Coffee, soups. I had gotten like envelopes, stamps at the jail that I could use them. Then when I went to another jail, I got like postcards, just stuff like that, sweets, because you don't get a lot of sweets in jail. But yeah, just little snacks here and there, but mostly coffee. For me, it was coffee. Your first commissary order, you get like your shampoo, conditioner, whatever necessities you're gonna use and need. Better deodorant, toothpaste, all that. But after that, for me, it was coffee, coffee, coffee. I know. I'm gonna answer this question even though I have a video on it. What's up with the spare room and all the lotions and sprays? Is it a collection? Your favorite scents? Okay, so I have downsized tremendously with that. With my giveaways and such. It's not a collection. I bought it to resell it. All of it started in 2020 when everything shut down. I needed a way to make money. So I started thinking like, what, are, what could I do? What could I do? And... I had a couple of things, not like I do now, but I had a couple of things at Victoria's Secret because most of the time when you shop at Victoria's Secret Bath and Body Works, they either have stuff really cheap on sale or it's like buy five for this price and then you use a coupon. They have you buy a certain amount. It's cheaper than buying one. So you end up with a couple of them. So when I would have a couple of them, I'm like, well, what can I do with this stuff? So I started making gift baskets, Mother's Day, birthdays, Christmas, graduation. And I would sell them. When I sold it, it was cheaper than that person going to the store and buying that stuff themselves. Does the stuff go bad? Yes. I think there was one lotion I threw away. But besides that, no, because I end up selling it or give it away. I know how long I've had it. So I would end up giving it away so someone can use it before it goes bad or sell it. I wouldn't sell a, a bad product. I would throw it away. I like it because... I have stuff on hand that I can gift to my family. I can do giveaways. I even gave to Sober Living for Christmas one year. We did a pizza party and I gave them all Victoria's Secret goodie bags. It's just nice to have. My favorite scent right now is gonna be Wicked and Tea's Cocoa, the new Tea's Cocoa. Those are my top two right now from Victoria's Secret. Those perfumes are so good. Favorite holiday. Okay, for me, holidays, I don't, I honestly don't really have a favorite. I like Thanksgiving and Christmas because I got to be with my family. But for me, it's anytime I get to spend time with my family, it doesn't matter what holiday it is. Cause I don't really, it's not a big deal to me, you know? Do I do hair care? Yes, I have, I have some products that I've tried here and there. I've been using Sol de Janeiro leave-in conditioner, the Olaplex hair oil. I have a couple of tutorials on my page. I need to get my hair cut. I found a Sol de Janeiro hair treatment too that you can leave in for like 10, 15 minutes and wash out. But that's just what I've been using because I like the smell of it. I'll just buy the travel size because it's 10 bucks. It'll last you a few times. But yeah, for me, that's, that's really it. I have a lot of people asking me about my hobbies and I used to like draw and color. 
I guess you could say what I like to do is try new things. I don't know if that would be a hobby or not, but I like to try new things, whether it's food, candy, makeup, skincare. I like trying those things. And it's not just for a review. I enjoy trying new things. I missed out on a lot of stuff over the years, so I love trying new things. So I guess that's kind of like a hobby. I guess you could say that's my hobby. Is it still a fight to keep sober the further you get into your journey? It's always gonna be a fight. It's not as hard as it is in the beginning of recovery, but you're always gonna have your days, your moments, your seconds, Anything can trigger you and it might not be like a full-blown trigger like oh my gosh I want to use it could at least put that thought into your mind and you're like, okay No, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? You learn more ways to cope you learn more ways or have more people to reach out to You just gotta hang in there. It's always gonna be a fight, but it just gets a little bit easier over time I'm not saying you go through a, a breakup a surgery um, accident you know, it could be a little bit harder during that time, but just don't give up no matter what. Can you tell me the best way to refocus on not using and how do you relocate your mind into doing something different? Okay, this is a good one. Someone else is around you in your house, you're at work, you're somewhere. Just literally get away from yourself, <laughs> walk over to someone and just be like, hey, how are you? Or it's cold outside or what about them balls? Whatever, just whatever you gotta say. Just literally move away from that spot and go find somebody and just start talking about anything. Your phone is a good distraction. You could literally get on here. You could get on here and leave a comment and start messaging. People will reply to your comments quickly. You're not alone. We have this, this right here. I didn't have this when I was out there and I didn't have this in early recovery. So this right here is an amazing tool that we should all definitely use. Besides calling someone, if you don't have someone to call, if you have someone to call, call someone. If you can't walk over to somebody, call somebody. Whether it's your mom, your best friend, anybody, just call anybody. That's my best advice. Find someone to talk to, whether it's in your house, you can go to a meeting, you can literally get up and just go to a meeting you don't have to say a word. You're just going there just so you're not sitting by yourself. You can get on your phone. You can message somebody, get, start in the comments. You can email, email me. The community is strong. We got a good community. So any of those ways, that's how you got to do it. You got to stop talking to yourself. Stop, stop letting your mind talk to you and just get out of it. Go to someone, get on the phone, just call. You don't even have to look at who you're calling. Just go like this and pick a number. Whatever you got to do. That is the biggest thing. Because sometimes you might think you're strong enough to handle it yourself. I always say call. Just find some way somehow to call somebody. Find my channel and get on there and be like, okay, what the heck is, what the heck are they talking about in this comment section? Because you won't be thinking about using it anymore. You're going to be reading the craziness people are talking about. <laughs> it works, I swear. <laughs> yeah, my favorite highlight palette. I don't have a highlight palette. I don't think I've ever bought one. My favorite highlighter, I like the Rare Beauty highlighter. I think it's Transcendo is the color. And then the Iconic Setting Spray because it gives you the glow. I, I say it all the time. I love that stuff. You don't even need highlighter on. You can just spray that spray. What advice do you have for people in recovery? I know I say it all the time. Don't give up. That's, that, that is it. No matter how hard it gets, when you think you can't do it, when you've convinced yourself you, there's no way I can do this, I can't get through this, I'm never going to get better, you are. Keep going. Things take time. Don't be discouraged. If you see other people in recovery with things that you don't have yet, it's okay. There is no time frame for when we're supposed to get things. You have family out there. You have a, a recovery community. And that's huge. To have a whole community? Come on, guys. A whole community that understands you. People care about you whether you believe it or not. I would also say if you can, find one person that you can reach out to whenever. I'm also going to say life is not going to be perfect every day in recovery. You're going to go through some hard stuff. It's life, man, and we can't control life. But just remember when you go through those things that you've been through worse. You have been through worse and you got through the worst part. And that is what makes you strong. So no matter if you feel defeated and you don't feel strong, you are strong. You got through that crazy stuff. We got we made it to recovery. And I know most of us are like, how the heck did I do that? 
it's fine. Just remember you did it. We all did it in different ways. Remember how strong you are. Remember, remember how hard that was. <laughs> you remember how hard that was living that crazy life and then finally deciding to get help and then doing it. Remember that because you are strong. You are strong. I don't care what anybody says about addicts and recovering addicts. We are some strong people. Remember that. What platform do you edit your videos on? I use CapCut and I was just using this phone. That's it. My S22 plus, but I'm having to go into CapCut and like sharpen the video and fix like the, the lighting and the colors and all that. There was a lot of editing. So I'm hoping the iPhone works. I'll keep you guys posted, but yeah, that's it. CapCut and I did it all on my phone. Sometimes I got on the laptop, but for me, it's quicker just to do it all on here. And then if I move it to my laptop and do whatever extras to it, but the phone is crazy. I am going to start using a camera too. So I'm going to try to transfer into that world next. If you are a beginner with social media, just use your phone and CapCut. It works wonders. And if you don't know how to use CapCut, just get, make like a, a five second video. Just go like blah, blah, blah. And then pull it up in the app and just start pressing different things and seeing what they do. Because that's what I did. That's how I learned. I feel like sometimes there are creators out there that will help you. But some of them speed through it too fast or charge you or whatever it may be. You know when you first get a new phone, you get on there and just mess with it? That's how you got to do the app too. Same thing. Um, Let's see. What inspired me to start TikTok and YouTube? Well, I shared how I started YouTube. And then TikTok, it was just people talking about so openly about addiction and recovery. And I was like, dang. So I started talking about it and people were listening and that's just how it started. What was the moment you realized you could get through everything and what helped you keep going? Now I answered this question, but to sum it up, you don't really know that you can get through everything. You don't really know, you don't know for sure. You just do it. I just know I was tired of living like that. That was enough. Enough was enough. I was sick of myself. I was sick of living like that. So I did something about it. And then I just never stopped. I kept doing something about it. I kept changing things, changing everything. And I just kept going. Nobody in recovery can say, oh, I got this. Like, you know, you just got it. Because in reality, anything can happen at any moment. You just got to keep going. You got to know that you could keep going. That's all you have to know. You have to know and have that motivation to keep going. Even if you spend the day sitting your butt in bed, you are still in recovery and you're still going. You don't have to get up and, and do all this crazy stuff every day. As long as you are in recovery for another 24 hours, you're doing it. And let me tell you, don't let anybody tell you the way you recover is the wrong way. There's no right way to recover. We are all different people. We have all been through different things. Even doctors, some doctors aren't even educated on addiction, so they can't even tell you. You as a person know, you know what you've been through, you know what works best for you. And whatever is keeping you alive and whatever is keeping you going and whatever is keeping you on the right path is what you need to be doing. Forget everybody else. Crazy thing is, <sighs> social media is crazy. I, I've never heard so many people, so many recovering addicts judging other recovering addicts besides on social media, for a recovering addict to be so focused on another recovering addict to try to like make them look like they're high or they're on something. It's just crazy to me. We just, we all just need to be focused on ourselves and how we can get through 24 hours, how we can keep our butts on the right side of things and not worry about everybody else's recovery. Helping someone is a different story, but bullying or bossing somebody around is not okay. My favorite jailhouse trick that I've done, that I learned, the hack, my favorite hack, is the mustard for heartburn, which I know a lot of people say, oh, that's not gonna work, or that makes it worse. But for me, that works instantly, and I get heartburn often. That little mustard packet, or I'll run downstairs to my refrigerator and eat a spoonful of mustard, instantly takes it away. That is the best hack that I learned when I was in jail. What is the closest you've come to relapsing and how did you get through it? Closest for me was when I had to have my surgeries and I know I've talked about this multiple times, but going through that pain, 
you're on the fence. You're like, I want to use because I'm in so much pain, but I can't use because for me, I know where it's going to take me personally. I, I know that I would have spiraled with it because that's what I've done in the past. So for me personally, it was just going through physical pain that caused me to have mental pain and I had to just fight it. I just... You know, want to know what I did? I laid down in the bed and let my body heal. I worked for a little while, but then I was like, I can't do this to myself. So I laid my butt down and I recovered. <laughs> I let my body and my mind recover. So yeah, I just didn't do it. I didn't do it. I did a lot of complaining about how bad it hurt, but I didn't use. <laughs> do you attend recovery meetings? I do not now. I did an early recovery when I was in sober living. I don't know why, I just, when I got out of sober living, I just didn't go. I was going to AA meetings, which in reality, it's all the same, you guys, the same practices. Nobody chased me off, nobody gave me bad vibes or anything like that. I just, I don't know, I just didn't go. I just told myself that if, if and when the day comes I need to go back, I will take my butt back to the meetings. It's, I could walk there from my house, it's like three minutes away. I have nothing against it, I know some people have had bad experiences, I did not. So yeah, it's just no reason. I did have a sponsor. I did work the steps. I did everything I was supposed to do. I just, I don't know why. I have no reason why I didn't go back. I just didn't. How do you find purpose in life? This, you guys, before you guys, my purpose, I set goals. It was work, save money so I can get a place, so I can do this, so I can do that. I set goals and the goals became my purpose. And I knew that one day I would find my actual purpose of why I'm on this earth. It's like I knew my passion, but I didn't know my passion. I knew what it was, but I didn't know how to do it, if that makes sense. And then social media happened and this is it. This is my purpose. No matter how tired I am or what kind of day I've had or what I'm going through in my personal life, because nobody on social media shares every single thing with their, with their community. You just, you gotta keep some things personal. But no matter what I go through in life, I still get my butt up, I get ready every day, and I make these videos for you guys every day. I know people get on here and look for videos. I know people are struggling and they, they need their outlet. And I know my videos help them with that. And I think that's pretty cool. So that's my purpose, you guys. Let's see. I have a lot of people asking about my license. My license was just a money issue for a long time. Now it's documents that are in Tennessee and I don't live there. And the last two times I went to Tennessee, I was unable to get them because I don't drive and my family was busy and had jobs and could not take me. But I think my mom and I are gonna plan a trip just to do that at some point, I'm hoping. So right now I just take Uber Lives, whatever we gotta do. It's fine, you guys. It's just paperwork. That is all I need is paperwork and they won't send it to me. So that's just how the courts work. <laughs> it's nothing I can control. So I just deal with things the way I can deal with them. How do you find ways to balance being an influencer and your private life? Does it get stressful? I don't want this to come off in a bad way because I love doing this, but yes, it gets stressful. For me, I'm, I'm already bad with time management. That's my problem. It's not necessarily being on social media. It's just time management. I've always been horrible with time management. So no matter how early I get up, it's like the earlier I get up, the longer I lay in bed. I don't know, you guys. I don't make sense in my own brain. And I'm more stressed out with the fact that I'm always tired for no reason. I'm always tired and it stresses me out. So it's not necessarily because of social media. And the more I stress, the less I can think. So the less I think, the less good quality video ideas I can push out, which is more stressful. So it's like a catch-22. So I'm hoping eventually I can, you know, get it together. I'm doing the best I can for now and it's working. So it's not stressful enough to where I'm like losing my mind or anything like that. But yeah, I do, I do have my days, I'll say that. But I wouldn't give it up for anything. I love doing this. Even even with the stress, I love doing it. You gotta think about it. Any job you have is gonna be stressful in some kind of way. Do you have any advice for women in their early 20s? I'm not sure what kind of advice, if you just mean in general. Try to focus on yourself and your life and what you wanna do with yourself. Don't get wrapped up in a relationship. Don't allow someone to Use you or take anything that you've worked hard for. 
there's a lot of people out there that feel entitled to, like, especially in relationships, if they don't have it, they feel like because you're dating that you should give them yours. And that is not necessarily how it works. If two people aren't both working hard and one is, you don't owe anybody anything. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Just because you're doing good, if you're hanging out with a bad boy, bad girl, they could get you in trouble too. <laughs> they could just be in the car doing crazy stuff or have stuff on them and you're going to get in trouble too, even if you have nothing to do with it. So just be careful who you surround yourself with. Be careful going out if you're someone that goes to like clubs and bars. Be very careful because there's crazy people out there that will put stuff in your drinks and just crazy stuff. So just be very careful. Be very aware of your surroundings, who you're with, all that stuff. I know in our 20s, we kind of push our families away because we're at that like, I want to be independent place in our lives, but don't. Still spend time with your family if you can. Just something here and there. Don't completely cut them off just because you're grown now, you know? <laughs> Same thing with your siblings, nieces, nephews, any family. I miss all the time that I missed with them. Usually friends don't stay around. You'll change friends throughout the year. You might have one friend that lingers your whole life, but normally friends change as you change. And don't let anybody hold you back. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Do it. If you're passionate about something, just do it. Don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough or you're not rich enough or whatever it may be. You're not pretty enough or whatever people, rude people say to people. Don't listen to it. You do whatever you want to do, whatever's in your heart, your passion. Don't listen to the haters. People are going to judge. They're going to hate no matter what you do. You cannot please everyone. So you do whatever makes you happy. Who cares what people wear? Who cares about the trends? Who cares what's in style and fashion? Do whatever makes you happy because at the end of the day, you see you every day. <laughs> Be yourself. Don't, don't do what everybody else does. When I started makeup, how did you get into it? I've always worn makeup. I just didn't really know what I was doing. I learned, honestly, just from watching social media, I've learned different techniques. But other than that, it's just me just buying stuff and trying it. That's just, you know, I know things about my face I want to highlight. Like when I don't have lashes on, I was a big mascara girl, my eyebrows. So those are just the products that I go to. Bronzer, I like bronzer. So I like being a little tan. So I look for bronzers. I think I'm going to wrap up this video. I know it was only a couple questions, but I'm going to wrap up this video. And then in a couple days, I will do a few more questions. There are a lot of questions, but I'm gonna try to get through them. I'll still mix up the content, but I, I just wanted to be able to answer some of your guys' questions for you. I know it's been a couple months since I've been able to do this, but you know, the traveling and life and all that good stuff. Also, check out my other videos because some of the questions that you guys asked, I've already made videos about. So like, kind of scroll through my older videos and see if the question that you asked me is answered in one of those videos. And some of my shorts too. I have a playlist called My Story that has a lot of a lot of stories in it too. But I hope these answers helped you guys. I will do another part soon. And yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today. See you guys. <laughs>